Welcome to Podcasting Unlocked, a mini series with me, host Paul Banks. I've been podcasting for five years and I've met so many business owners who want to get involved with podcasting and just don't know where to start. They don't know where to host it, how to host it, what setup they need, what equipment they need, how to manage their guests, and have no idea about process. If that sounds like you, this show's for you. Come join us each week for the next few weeks as we discuss podcasting unlocked. How good was that? I love it. I love it. Thank you, StreamYard, for introducing that auto feature. Um, they've now implemented intro videos and outro videos to your live stream. Fantastic. Um, that saved me a lot of work. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of this mini series, Podcast and Unlocked. I'm Paul Banks. If you haven't met me before, I'd be very surprised, but you know, it's possible. Um, hello. Um, why am I qualified to talk about podcasting? Um, I'm not a, a multi million download podcaster, I'm not Mr. Beast's protege, and um, I've had mixed success with podcasting. Let's say that. Um, but I've always achieved what I wanted to achieve, and that's fundamental for every business owner. So whether your goals are lead generation, collaboration, or networking, maybe you just want to raise awareness for your business, this show's for you. If you're on the boundaries or on the fence about whether to launch your own podcast or not, and you've always wanted to launch one, this is the time where you get to ask your questions. We are live. We are live, people. So please do. If you've got a question about um, why you should launch your podcast today, drop it in the comments below. Um, I've got lots and lots of points to raise for the show, but fundamentally, live streams are live for a reason because we like people to ask questions and I love answering your questions live. Um, I speak to a lot of people who are just like you. You have a great idea for a podcast. You've thought about it in the past. Um, maybe you've even tried to launch one and gone down the process of getting it all set up. And then you realize how much work is actually involved or can be involved. Um, so today, I'm not going to dwell on the, the challenges in getting your podcast set up. Today, I'm going to go to one step before that. We're going to talk about why you should have your own podcast, why it's important, and what can you get out of it. Um, there are still, I still speak to a lot of people each week where. They believe that people who have their own podcast are um, aiming to get millions and millions of downloads, make lots of money from sponsorships and adverts. Right, that is one route to go for podcasting. I have to say it's probably not the easiest to achieve, right? There are lots, millions and millions of podcasts out there. There are equally millions of listeners. The chances of you creating a podcast that gets high volume listens um, or downloads or views without any significant financial input is pretty slim. You have to have a really unique idea. And most people I speak to who are in the B2B space, it's usually a pretty niche audience that you're aiming at. So let's put that idea to bed, right? Like this conversation is not about how you create a podcast that gets millions of downloads. This is a conversation about what are the other benefits of running a podcast? Um, so right, let's, let's look at the, some of the stats around this, right? So 72% of medium-sized business owners listen to at least one podcast per week. Something like 34% of small business owners listen to one podcast per week. And 62% of all people who listen to an advert on a podcast are more likely to buy from that brand who's advertised on the podcast if they trust the podcast. And I think that's something that a lot of the stats out there don't really clarify. You've got to believe in the podcast. You can't just listen to a podcast for the first time and believe that the, 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 the businesses that are advertising on there are legitimate, right? You've got to build credibility first. And what I ask people is, you know, we talk a lot about sponsorships for podcasts and, you know, if you can get that, you can raise that, brilliant, that's good. Um, absolutely go for it do it in the right way and and help pay for your business venture, right? It's fine. But if you're anything like me, like you find that those sponsorship deals are a little bit icky sometimes. People want to kind of take over your podcast a little bit or you don't like the idea of 
you've got to be very careful about who you get sponsored by. Why not sponsor it yourself, right? No finance needs to pass by, but you drop a little advert about your business. And I think this is the bit that a lot of people miss is you need to make the podcast something different to your main business. It can't just be, um, or it, well, I suppose it can, right? Like I'm maybe, maybe exaggerating a little bit, but most businesses, the best plan is to do something that's a tangent, that's complementary to what you do, something you're passionate about, something you really get a kick out of, which allows you to then sneak an advert into the podcast talking about your business. So there's definitely that element of it there, you know, raising awareness for your business. Aside from that, it's easy content, very easy content. I generally have far more content I could put out each week than anybody could absorb, right? And so then it becomes a case of trying to distill that down as to what's absolutely necessary to go out. Um, I think a lot of people spend a lot of time sat at the desk each week looking at their keyboard, wondering what to write as a post on LinkedIn every day. You know, sitting there with sweaty hands, like, oh God, um, I said I'd post about this this month and I've you know we're three days in and I already can't think of what to post about next. Let's let's tap something into chat GPT and see how that comes out. And the fact of the matter is if you've got a podcast, you've got content for days and days and days. So just mix and match that up. It means you probably need to generate either half as much content for your business as you used to, or you can focus on generating much more strategic content because the pressure isn't there every day to, to put something out. You can just put clips of your podcast out, right? So I mean, while I'm talking about this, if you're watching along in the audience, um, I'd love to hear from you. Have you started your own podcast yet? Have you got an idea for a podcast? Would you like to start a podcast? What's, what's the audience's experiences with podcasting? Are you curious? Do you not have a clue about podcasting? You're just here to find out what, what, the, big, what the big deal is. Um, I'm always interested to know what, what people's background is on this. So while we're talking, if you drop that in the comments, either on LinkedIn or YouTube, then we'll make sure we get that answered and, and kind of we'll give you a bit of a shout out while we're on, right? Um, I speak to a lot of business owners who just don't know why they should start a podcast still. And one of the main benefits that I see from my own podcast is the opportunity to network. Now, if I go out onto LinkedIn and ask a bunch of random strangers to one, connect with me and two, to give up 30 minutes of their time to have a conversation, I'm quite unlikely to get that 30 minute conversation. And when I do, it might not even be a good fit. Um, you know, they might be in a completely adjacent part of the industry that, that doesn't really impact on mine. We can't really help each other. It's a nice, nice hail fellow well met type conversation, but you don't really get anywhere, right? Um, so for me, the opportunity there is one, I'm much more likely to get people to come on the podcast because I'm giving something for free. We, we give away the clips of the episode. We download those over to the guests and it creates a bit of reciprocity. And that really does work in your favor. So people then are much more likely to want to give something back to you. So they've already given up their time to have a conversation. They don't see that as them giving anything. And they want to help you because you're helping them. You're creating a fuss. You're creating some PR. You're, you know, talking about their brand, their business, their services. And so it then becomes very easy to get them to become a referral partner or to keep an eye out for the right sort of people. Um, so I definitely think that that networking opportunity is something that podcasting creates. And for me, I keep it really simple. Like I only, I only do that networking either just before or just after the recording of the actual episode. I don't have a pre-screen meeting because I, I don't want to take up too much of people's time or my own. I want to keep things fairly streamlined. But having that there, and then if we, you know what, if we're getting on like a house on fire and it's really fun, either we just extend the end of the meeting if we, neither of us have a hard stop, or we put in another meeting and it's a it's a fairly qualified networking meeting right like we've we've had a chat we know broadly what each other do and actually this is quite interesting so let's chat where else can you get that other than networking groups that you have to pay for so i just think that that double that up with the amount of content that you get out of it add to that the awareness that you get for positioning your brand to people and you're on a good track already um i do think then that if you look at um creating a community 
is is really important, right? And it's something you can do quite easily with with a podcast, depending on um, how you position the podcast and what you're aiming at. Is you can create a community of engaged people who will be champions for you. So you might not even meet some of them necessarily, but you will get it out there to people who are engaged in your space and appreciate your viewpoints and your passion and your energy on the topics that you're helping them with, which then creates the likelihood that they will you know, represent you to somebody that, that might buy from you or that will be interested to meet you. And I think that is, in 2024, I think community and video are the two tools that all B2B businesses should be adopting. Um, it's, not a, it's not an if and when, it's a how right now, right? You need to make sure that you're building that in some way. And I also think that, not only that, but you know, if, if you look at, if we look at US stats, right? 45% of monthly podcast listeners are making $75,000 a year or more, right? That's what, 50, 50 60K in, in British pounds. People who are in lower paid jobs tend not to be listening to podcasts as much, according to the stats. I, I'm not necessarily sure it's that clear, 45%, but you know, if we, if we look at it across that, then it's clear that there is a demographic there of people who are office workers who are more blue collar, um, that, that you're reaching a higher quality of audience as well, which when you start building a community in that area, you can leverage that, right? You might not need to leverage that for your own business. You might leverage it for other people's businesses and, and everybody wins. But the important thing is that you're creating that engagement with people. You're talking about topics that they're passionate about. And the other thing that I really see happening nicely with folks who are, who are running a podcast is they position themselves as an expert in their industry. Um, so for me, that's really important. I come from a non-marketing, non-sales background. Five, six years ago, I was in retail, you know, between admin and office jobs and running stores. I didn't have that market and sales experience. Didn't start until five years ago. And I'm loving absorbing all the information, getting all these things on board. But by, you know, my, my podcast is talking to other marketers and business owners about their marketing strategies. I learned from that. That's great for me. It helps upskill me and create knowledge for me. But just by being around experts in their own right, I'm raising my own profile with my audience. So you can leverage that where you don't have anything in an industry. And I did this previously. Okay, So my old job, I was selling conversational analytics into contact centers, into business process outsourcers and customer service teams at enterprise level. We didn't have any experience there. I didn't have any knowledge. I didn't have any thoughts or opinions to kind of be be proactive with and getting content out there. So I was, I was like I was stuck. And launching a podcast is what enabled me to connect with that audience, grow an engaged network, and create lots and lots of business opportunities, not just for us, but for other people that we were working with and people that I'd gotten on with as well. So I do think that if you launch a podcast, there are a multitude of benefits that you can see, and none of them are always, not, not many of them, sorry, not many of them are as obvious as you would think. Again, we go back to what I said at the beginning. Most people, most people believe that a podcast is about getting millions and millions of views or downloads, right? And that is, if you can achieve that, fantastic. Um, that's, that's absolutely something that's worth aiming for, but I think for most B2B business owners, it's unrealistic. The sorts of content that you're going to be putting out are aimed at a, a much niche audience. They're a little bit more dry. They're businessy. Uh, and unless you are talking about how you made, like, you know, something really catchy, like how I made millions of pounds selling shoes to, I don't know, like, you get my point. It's got to be, it's almost got to sound like clickbait. It's got to sound like too good to be true. Like what? What did they just say? to get those sorts of views. Even then, you need a full-time team behind it, right? Like you need a, a graphic designer who can design your YouTube thumbnails. You need um, a strategist, you need content writers, you need copywriters, you need SEO, you need paid advertisement. Right? All of those things don't come cheap. And so many people I speak to misunderstand the true cost of launching a podcast. So, 
the question then comes to me. Oh, I said I wouldn't get too much into why podcasts fail, right? And I'm not going to, but people underestimate how much effort a podcast create is, is generated with. It's a lot of effort, especially at the beginning, especially when you're getting set up, um, building out all the platforms, getting the hosting set up, getting your technology set up, getting it all speaking to each other, getting a process in place, getting the first guests found, start to figure out how you talk about the, the podcast and the intro and outro and all these things. Please don't underestimate how much effort is involved. Go into it with your eyes open. But know that if you do it, it is worth it. Something like 92% of all podcasts fail. And what I mean by fail is they don't make it to 10 episodes. And that, that blows my mind. I've never launched a podcast that hasn't gotten to 10 episodes. I'm, but then I'm, I'm quite like a dog with a bone, right? Like, I, <laughs> like if, I, if I launch something, I'll launch it and I give it, give it time and make sure it works. Um, I think a lot of people struggle with the initial stats like they, they, they go into it expecting these thousands of downloads and actually first week you might get 30 or 40 if you're lucky. Um, sometimes you get less than that and it's, it's a case of building towards things. The key change that I had, one of my revelations that I had was when I had a guy called Jason Hunt. Hi, Jason, if you're watching, um, on my show. And he's a guy who's run a podcast for over 200 episodes. Still doesn't get millions of downloads. But what he said to me was quite transformational for my understanding of, of what a podcast actually is. And he said two things. First of all, he said, um, once you get over 100 episodes, Paul, it starts to generate momentum. It gets to the point where you're like a stone rolling downhill and people want to be part of it. Everywhere they go, if they search for your podcast, you're, you're up there, you're in the rankings, even without sort of paid adverts or anything like that, you're, you, you're about and people can see lots of presence for you. And people who are looking to be on podcasts will start to reach out and, and ask to be on your show. And I'm, I'm starting to see that for Market Pulse now. We are 35 episodes in, I believe, thereabouts. And I'm starting to get lots of people now reaching out to me, you know, secretaries, PAs, uh, executive assistants saying, my CEO would really love to be on your podcast. It's like much easier for me, so I appreciate that. Um, but also, he explained the, 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 the awareness of a podcast in a different way to what I'd ever heard it described. And he said, it's like having a drip onto a surface. And you're dripping drips of water down. And to start off with, like those drips don't make a great deal of difference. You look, you look at the puddle underneath it. You know, if you were dripping one drop per day, you wouldn't see much difference for the first couple of weeks. You get a bit of evaporation happens and some of it dries up. Um, and he said, you know what, you, people think of a podcast as being this tangible thing. It's I have a podcast. But he said, if each episode is one drip of water into that puddle, over time, that puddle starts to expand and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And after, you know, six months, a year, two years, you filled almost a swimming pool full of water. And that understanding is like it's the surface area that you're creating, not the individual drops. That for me is a really powerful explainer of how it impacts on your brand, your PR, your business, your website, your conversations that you're having with people. Um, so if it's not clear enough from the conversation I'm, I'm, I'm putting out here, is I genuinely think that if you're a B2B business owner, most people should be hosting their own podcast. Right? That's not an underestimation. Um, whether you're capable of it, have the personality for it, have the confidence to do it, have the technical skills to do it, the time to do it, or the finances to do it is a different matter entirely. Um, but there are a lot of people out there who, who have all of the above or the majority of the above and don't know how to get started, don't know where to start with things. So what I'm going to say is join us over the next few weeks. We're going to, we're going to take a break at some point for, for October half term. Um, I won't be about because we'll, be we'll be on family leave. Um, but other than that, we're going to run one a week. We're going to be a live stream like this. Bring your questions, bring your concerns, your challenges, your worries. And we're going to get through this. We're going to talk you through the tools, the platforms, the, the hardware setup 
um, cameras, microphones, um, strategy, process, managing your guests, all of these things that get in people's way so that you can run a basic podcast, you can launch your podcast, you can get it out there without having to worry too much. What I will say is a podcast like it grows arms and legs very quickly, right? So be very careful when you launch a podcast, be very specific about what you plan to do from day one and where you want to get to. And I've seen a lot of people burn themselves out and I did this once, right? I did this. Um, I tried to do everything all at once. It was a very useful learning experience for me in terms of all the different types of content we could create from it, but we went too far too quickly and I couldn't keep up with the content. Um, but I've now launched you know, a couple of podcasts myself, a couple of podcasts with clients where we've had a much more manageable starting process. It can feel a little overwhelming at times, but it's manageable and you grow the podcast capabilities as you grow the show. And we're seeing some fantastic results now for across the board. You know, I've, I've generated personally uh, £36,000 worth of business this year from the podcast alone, from, from just conversations, partnerships, leads that have come through the podcast. Um, I've got clients that are, you know, growing rapidly with their view numbers and getting lots of engagement and sponsorship opportunities. I can't recommend it enough, but you need to be aware of what you're getting yourself involved with, right? Um, and, and when I say that, you know, most podcasts fail by 10 episodes. That is a scary statistic because I thought it was fairly easy to get to 10. Um, don't forget the power of what you get out the back end of it. That repurposed content is absolutely invaluable. There's lots of tools out there that will do a, a half decent job of automatically repurposing long form video for you. Um, if you follow me, you'll know I'm a big fan of Descript. That's probably a bit hands-on for most people to get to learn unless you've got time to, to figure it out. You're a bit technically minded. It's not hard to use, but it is very powerful. But there are other tools that you can put stuff into that, that are getting better all the time that you can create clips with. And then at some point, you can either bring somebody into the team to, to help with that repurposing or you can outsource it. And that's, that's what we do at Javelin. Um, so my, my thoughts are like we, we've, the reason I'm launching this mini series is because I'm also launching a podcast enablement service. So we're going to work with three business owners a month on podcasting. I've already got two. We've already got two signed up. I've got one more space. Um, so if you're thinking about launching a podcast or you have launched a podcast and it's getting too much for you, come and have a chat with us. We've got a, a light model that we can roll out for you that gets you lots and lots of content, lots and lots of support, takes a lot of stuff off your plate and still gets you the results. And we can have a chat. Like I'm not, not promising we'll, we'll be able to work together and might not even be with us that you end up working with. I've got lots of partners in the space who can support people that I can't in ways that I can't. But the door's open, love to have a chat with you in that space. You want a bit more support and advice and come back next week where we'll be discussing, let me, let me just get this right. Um, we'll be discussing the challenges of launching your own podcast. Where, does, where do podcasts fall down? What do people do wrong? And how can we help you avoid those by, by going through the series? Um, and I can tell you there's a million and one different ways that a podcast can fail, but there are some very common themes amongst it all. Um, so if you wanna know what those are, Come back next week and hopefully we can get you past that point where you're on the fence about podcasting. You can decide for yourself, this is for me. This is definitely not for me. Um, you can stop worrying about it. See you next week. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Podcasting Unlocked. This is a mini series. We're not going to go on forever, but I do want to give you enough information to be dangerous and get out there so that you can launch your own podcast successfully and stick with it. If all of this seems like it's a little bit too much and you'd like some support from somebody who knows what they're doing, who's done it before, then I'm here at your disposal. I take on three podcast clients per month and one of those slots is currently filled. We are looking for potential clients for the remaining two. And if you just want a bit of advice, then we can certainly sort you out with that as well.
Thanks for coming along. Please do spread the word. And if you know anybody that is thinking of starting their own podcast or would be a good fit, please do invite them to the show where they can come along and have their own questions answered as well. See you next week. Bye-bye.